kind words. So, Merry Christmas, everybody. Um, so today is the fourth day of Advent, and we've been working through a series of Advent, and each week we've uh, focused in on a particular theme. So we started out with hope, and then we went to peace, and then love, and today is joy. Um, and so, does anybody know what Advent means? It means coming. So the season of Advent is a time that a lot of churches around the world carve out to focus in on a, a, and take a posture of expectant waiting. We are expectantly waiting to celebrate Jesus and the fact that he came all those years ago. But as well, we're invited to live in a posture of expectant waiting now as we anticipate his coming again. And these four themes of Advent are amazing gifts that God, has, that God gives us, um, and they help us to have a, a posture of expectant waiting that's, um, that's, that's lively, that's, that brings life. So you might be wondering why David's standing behind me. Um, as we talk about joy today, it, um, it might mean not be too much of a stretch, but try to imagine him as Jesus. And we're going to, and when I talk about Jesus and stepping into him and receiving the gifts that he offers, um, it's just a little picture of what um, I'm learning to do and I hope that I can share with you today um, as I talk about joy. So what's joy? <laughs> um, my name is Joy. Um, Wikipedia defines joy this way. It says that a feel it's a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. And I think that most of us might see something missing in that definition that joy is actually a lot more than a feeling or an emotion, but it's actually um, a state of being. It's, it's a gift of the Holy Spirit, and it um, has depth to it that happiness doesn't have. So for instance, I might um, feel tired and near, need a break and think, man, just sitting in front of the TV is gonna make me happy, and it probably will, but it's not a lasting happiness. I'm, I'm still gonna feel tired and maybe frustrated or whatever else afterwards. On the other hand, this gift of joy that we receive from the Holy Spirit is one that goes deep. And when we experience joy, it, um, it's less affected by our circumstances and our environment. It's one that is as we lean into Jesus, has the opportunity to, to be um, much greater than our circumstances and our environment. Does anybody remember the story about Paul in the Bible? He was one of um, the early church apostles, they called him. He was a radical believer of Jesus, and he was radical because Jesus changed his life. He had a particular journey and when he encountered Jesus, everything changed. And um, he was super excited about it, and he wanted to tell everybody about it. And uh, there's one story, I mean, there's lots of stories about Paul in the Bible, but there's one story about him doing that thing, telling everybody about Jesus, and then uh, being arrested and beaten with a rod and then being imprisoned, uh, chained up, and then uh, put in prison. And the Bible records that that evening, around midnight, he and one of his buddies were praying and singing to Jesus. They were praying and rejoicing. So, you know, that's not happiness. That's an inner state of being and a connection with the giver of joy that would allow you to do that. Um, pretty cool story. First Peter 1, 8 through 9 says, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him 
and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you're receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So joy is a gift from God, and I think it's a gift that, one of the gifts that we receive in increasing measure as we get to know him more and as we cling to him. On the other hand, joy is not our default state. Um, even as believers. And when Ramesh asked me if I would talk about joy, the first thing that came to my mind is Habakkuk. Um, and the reason for that is that God talked to me about joy quite a few years ago through this story. Um, and to the point that we don't automatically feel joy um, in the early stages of David and my marriage there was a season of expectant waiting. Um, our process of moving into parenting was one of waiting and waiting and waiting. Um, and at, as I tried to have a posture of expectant waiting, um, there was a lot of pain in the, process, in the journey. And that pain came to a head with a miscarriage and during that season, I felt um, unhappy and I struggled to feel joy. I, I guess you could say that my experience and circumstances were really um, managing my thoughts and my emotions much greater than my connection with God. And, um, and then the Lord said, read Habakkuk. So I read it over, and I'm just going to take you through. It's a very short book in the Old Testament. It's only three chapters long. Habakkuk was a prophet, prophet one of the minor prophets. And um, the, com the story of Habakkuk is really a back-and-forth conversation between him and God. And um, it starts out as a lament, Habakkuk's... Um, talking to God about um, the evil and um, injustice in the world because uh, God's chosen people were not living uh, for God and they were making a lot of bad mistakes. So Habakkuk was complaining to God about what was going on. And then God responded to him um, with, guess what, Habakkuk? I see what's going on and I'm going to bring judgment and I'm gonna use the Babylonians to do it. And that was not good news. That, di that did not warm Habakkuk's heart because the Babylonians were twice as evil and harsh and having them um, create judgment on Israel was a scary prospect. And so uh, Habakkuk comes back to God with that answer like, but you know, how could, you're a just God, how could you have um, unrighteous people bring judgment on people more righteous than them? He was just arguing with him and complaining. And, um, and then God responds again. And in, when I read it, I almost feel this kind of shifting of, of um, as I read it, that God's just kind of slowing down and he's saying, but, but Habakkuk, um, this is what I say, and, um, and I know these things that you're pointing at. You know, you don't need to, to remind me of them. And then again, Habakkuk responds, but it's very different. His response is, okay, you are God. I've heard what you've said, and I, I believe he's encountered God in this conversation. And... Um, I'm not, I'm gonna leave this to you, and I trust you. So he, go, he moves from this um, complaining posture and very fearful. It's like he was looking through a lens of fear and anxiety and complaint. And as he encountered the Lord, as he heard from the Lord, there was a shift in his lens. It went to... Um, to um, I trust you, and it even went to rejoicing. Rejoicing is expressing joy. 
in through words, saying joyful things and rejoicing. And um, this is what Habakkuk says. It's in uh, chapter 3, verses 17 to 18. Though the fig tree does not bear fruit, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. So um, he went from complaining, fearful, anxiety, but God, look at what's happening, into God's present inter re intera re interacting with him, experiencing something different than that. He experiencing faith and hope, and he started rejoicing as he stepped into interaction with the Lord. Nothing changed in his circumstance. What changed was internal, because he interacted with the Lord. So that's um, a picture of, of what I, I believe real joy is. And when I read that passage all those years ago, um, this is what I got out of it. Um, to be honest, it was just more like a revelation. Revelation is, um, it's like all of a sudden you get something that you didn't get before. And it's not through study or anything other than God kind of opening your mind to something. And the revelation was this. God loves me so much, and he's so merciful, that even though I'm going through this right now, he wants me to experience joy, and he's going to give it to me. It's a gift from him. And... Um, that's, that's what I got from it at that point, and it has taken a lot of years for me to um, move into and f to, allow, to receive that joy as I interact with God. It's, not, it's something he's building in me. It's not an automatic, you're good for life in my situation anyways. It's something he keeps building in me, and it is such a gift. Um, so if, if joy is not our default state, how do we move um, towards joy? How do we, uh, yeah, t take that step? As we've already been talking about, we move towards Jesus, number one. Um, <laughs> um, as well, it's, it's helpful to know that there is a relationship between joy and gratitude. So many of you may have heard of Brene Brown. She is a well-known um, research scientist, and her area of expertise is social work. And a, a lot of what she's known for is work on vulnerability and empathy. It's really interesting stuff. But through her years and years of research, she's also taken a look at joy. And she has uh, wondered, they always start with a question, and in her research, she wanted to know the relationship between gratitude and joy. And going into it, she expected that individuals that um, are joyful will naturally be more thankful because they have more to be thankful for. So that's the direction that she expected. But after about 12 years of research and interviewing thousands of people, she reported that no one she re interviewed that reported being joyful or ex experiencing joy in life did not also report having a... Um, habit of gratitude. And so she's not talking about um, saying thanks every once in a while. She, uh, she reported that these folks who were consistently living joyfully also had a daily routine where they um, practiced gratitude. So one example might be um, prayer before a meal. It, um, 
what she did and we have done as well is at meal times um, going around the table and asking each person what are you thankful for today what and sh making that shift of of looking at the good the good things in our life it's really helpful and uh, interestingly another research guy named Carl Lehman um, he is a psychiatrist but he's also a developer of the Emanuel approach and the Emanuel approach is an inner he healing tool um, that some of us use to bring a healing in areas of our lives that there's hurt and pain and he's done research on the brain and he has um, through observing brain activity, he has seen that um, when we express gratitude, um, brain activity shifts from being left brain, which is logical and reasoning, logic and reasoning, more towards right brain, which is relational. Um, so through gratitude, our um, brain activity shifts from left brain logical knowing to right brain uh, relational. Why is that relevant? It's relevant because when we are um, interacting with God, we can, through gratitude, move from knowing who God is and who he says he is into relating with him and knowing he's with us right now. That's that brain shift, but it actually um, enables us to move into interaction and engaging with God with us now. And it's that place of knowing his presence and experiencing him that we experience joy. That's when we know joy. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite speakers is Bill Johnson, and some of us might be familiar with him. Um, and he says, when, God, when you're in God's presence, no problem is impressive. And that kind of goes along with this, that you know, regardless of what's going on, we have this invitation to step into God's presence it shifts our emotions, it shifts our thinking, it shifts our perspective, and we have the opportunity to know his joy. And all the stuff that's going on out there just doesn't seem as scary because we've got, he's got us, right? Mm -hmm. Finally, joy is a powerful weapon. Um, Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So joy gives us endurance. It, uh, when we abide in joy in Jesus, we're able to move through pain and discomfort and um, not, not get derailed the same way because we're experiencing that, his perspective and his joy. Um, one more research bit, but I find this really interesting, that um, trauma is an experience that, ha trauma occurs when we experience something and it creates more pain than we are able to process in the moment. And, and that's the and as a result trauma occurs and then the trauma means um, we've got a, a wound and it and it will likely um, bother us until it's dealt with and there has been research into trauma that suggests that um, the tool for processing pain in the moment the capacity that we need within ourselves to go through pain and suffering um, and process it is joy. That our that inner sense of well-being gives us the fuel that we need 
to um, make sense of and move through the pain without trauma occurring. That's super good news too. And so um, whether we're looking back in our lives and processing pain that we've experienced in the past, we can um, move into the Lord's presence and experience his joy. And in that place uh, with him, we can work through memories and trauma in order to, to process them properly. Likewise, if we are just um, building in uh, this relationship with the Lord and growing in our capacity for joy, as we move through life, there will be less opportunity for trauma to occur. So joy is a powerful weapon. Um, and so we're going to take some time today um, to slow down to uh, invite God's presence and to um, express some gratitude in order to encounter him and invite him to release his joy. It's a gift from the Lord. It's a gift that we receive as we interact with, with Jesus. And I know as in this Christmas season that uh, Christmas isn't always a happy time for everybody. It, it often comes with grief. Some memories are happy, some memories are hard. And, um, and so we want to acknowledge that, first of all. And we have this opportunity to um, experience the joy of Christmas in leaning into him together now. And Holy Spirit, I thank you so much that you're here with us now. I thank you that it's your desire to meet with us. It is... Um